Let's take a look at today. All right. Cool. So today we are going to be taking a look at the two files that I provided you guys with. So the first thing you can do for me is once you've opened up that After Effects file that has our cool cucumber character in it, right? Uh, so that's the file that I gave you guys for this week. You can then just import that bonearmw4.ai file. That's the arm for this week that we'll be practicing. See, the stream's very slow, but hopefully that'll change when this finishes here. Okay. That's done. Then... All right, so I'm just going to quickly stop presenting and start again, see if I can get the stream to catch up. Okay, cool. So with this arm, we're going to be doing something very similar to last week. All right, so essentially rather than doing like a finger snap, we're just going to have this little noodle arm pull in and then the fingers closing over and going out again. All right, uh, and then once we're done taking a look at this, I'll have introduced you to the concept of Duik that we'll be using for our character, and then I can show you the way from there. Okay, cool. So I'm going to reset my arm so long. You guys can just let me know when you are in After Effects and ready to continue. Um, let's do that. Let's add these here. Okay. Ready, ready, steady, fantastic. Okay. So, <coughs> what we're going to do is make sure that we move our anchor points all into the correct position first. Yeah. So our arm layer, so that's layer nine, our anchor point is just gonna go to where the shoulder would be. Thankfully, we don't need to worry about that. Uh, we won't be using that one today. Okay, then obviously all the fingers, you move their anchor points into the correct position. All right. And the only parenting that we're going to do is from all the fingertips to their corresponding bases. Okay, so that's layer one parented to layer two, layer two to three, three to four, five to six, etc. All right, we're not going to parent the arm to anything and we're not going to parent those finger bases to anything just yet either. All right, Ayala, Angela, you guys good? Ivana, are we all right? Right, so I'll assume that we're all good. Fantastic. Cool. Strange. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to go about a, a new method today in doing sort of generating bones. Now, this was covered in the tutorials that I linked to you guys. Um, but yeah, we're going to do like the official introduction to this. And then this will be the same method, essentially, that we'll be animating our character on. Okay. So let's introduce you to the Puppet Pin tool first. All right, so when my mouse is hovering on screen at the moment, if I click, I get my little um, thumbtack icon. All right, so that's the tool furthest to the right, the um, puppet position pin tool. Okay, so once I have that selected, we can just take a look at a little bit of the uh, information that's up here um, at, the, at the top. Right, so as long as I have this tool selected, I'm going to have th three pieces of unique information regarding that uh, pin tool. All right, the very first one is mesh. Okay, so you can click and turn that box on for me. 
that's going to allow you to see the mesh that you generate once we start placing these points. To the right of that says expansion. You can let that read three if it doesn't already. And then density should read nine, but we're going to change that particular piece soon. All right. So with my pin tool, what I'm going to do is just click on my arm layer. And I'm going to place a point in each of these little white circles. Okay. And you'll see that once you place these points, um, three things will essentially have happened. Very first thing, we'll now see a mesh on our arm. Now remember, if you don't see this, it's because we need to turn the mesh option on up here in the top left. All right. But we will see that mesh. All right. We're also going to see these little yellow dots that I can move up and down. Uh, and that's going to allow me to deform my arm. So those are the points that we've just placed. Now, the most important thing that's just happened is what we can see either down here in the layer drop down, which will automatically open up for you once you place your pins, or you can find it in the effect controls window up here on the top left, right? So directly next to the project tab. Let's just see how far behind stream is. Okay, there we go. So this is the most important step. This is something that everyone forgets. And if you don't get this right when you're rigging a character for this particular animation method, this is where you're going to cry. Okay. So we have to, have to, have to make sure that we set our puppet engine just using the little drop down found below the layer. It's the exact same drop down in our, um, oops. Excuse me, the exact same drop down found in our effect control panel top left mm -hmm. currently it reads advanced we have to make sure that we set this to legacy all right so before we move on with anything else we need to make sure that we set the puppet pin and en uh, the engine to legacy all right do it can't read the advanced version okay now if you've done that correctly and you go and click back onto one of your little yellow points on our arm asset you'll see that our mesh should look slightly different, all right? Um, and the biggest difference here is if we go to the top where it used to say density, right? Remember, it used to say density nine. With my public pin tools, if I've selected any of these points on my asset, it will now read triangles instead of density, all right? So these triangles are what we have to be able to see before we can continue. So. Do we all see the word triangles up here at the top where you used to say density? Great. Cool. So currently my triangles are set to 500. If yours aren't, you can set them there as well. Um, and what the triangles refer to, as I've said on the mesh is we can take a look here and see how this works. Okay, so the triangles refer to the literal triangles that we've now placed across the mesh. All right. Now, if I were to quickly deform this, I hover over my actual shape, um, you'll see that technically the bounding box for this shape has not moved. All right. I've not uh, like actually animated or changed um, <clears throat> like any of the properties of this asset. I'm just creating the illusion that it is being deformed. So that's where the number of triangles becomes important. After Effects needs to keep track of every single piece of information inside of each of these triangles to know where they correspond to one another and where they should be going in order to create the solution. Okay. So if I used more triangles than I need, so let's say I took this up to like 9,999, right? It's just gonna bomb my PC out definitely have too many triangles um <clears throat> excuse me so what we want to make sure to do is the exact same thing with keyframes we want as few keyframes we want as few triangles on our mesh as possible to get what we need okay to achieve our goals cool so my triangle reads 500 if i move slightly to the left and i take a look at my expansion which currently says three uh you can leave it as it is but just to give you a visual idea of what that does I've quickly set mine to negative three and you'll see then that when the stream actually catches up, 
I have left some of my information behind. Let's see. Yes, no, there we go. Okay, so you'll see that I've left uh, sort of like this information around uh, behind. It. And that's again, if I zoom in, that's because my mesh is ending before the border of my actual asset. Okay, so that information is going to be left behind. So I typically want to have a mesh that only slightly overflows uh, with the actual assets. So I'll put it on three, and this is just going to allow for a fairly nice, um, smooth deform sort of method over there. Okay. Are we all good? We all see triangles. We've all set it to legacy. We're all ready to move on to the next step. Yes. Fantastic. Yes, yes, yes. Dope. So, selecting my arm layer. Now I'm going to hit U for uniform. And that is going to collapse all my unnecessary information and reveal that once we created our points with our pins, right, with that puppet pin tool, we then got... Um, some keyframes placed for us. Okay. So those keyframes are going to sort of reside in a, let's call this a, a layer stack. All right. But it's going to always start. The lowest pin is always going to be the very first pin that you place. All right. So to make my life easier, I'll always start at the point that's closest to the torso moving away. All right, so that's starting at the shoulder, moving to the elbow and the wrist, so that when those pins sit on top of each other, they're moving um, sort of in the reverse order of the layer stack. So I'll have my wrist at the top, and I'll have my elbow in the middle and my shoulder at the bottom. Okay. Cool. So I need to relabel these now to make my life easier. It's very important we do this because Doik is going to use the exact same labeling function that we are. So I'm going to rename... Shoulder to shoulder, elbow, and then finally wrist. You can check, right? You can make sure that you're moving the correct thing. So I know that my elbow um, is what I'm currently working with because I have it uh, selected and I can see like the layer itself, right? So here, here I've messed up because the pin that I've selected is actually the wrist, but it's been called the elbow. So I'm going to change that. Must not have been paying attention. That's elbow. And then I can always just change their layer hierarchy around by clicking and dragging so that I know I now have everything correctly selected. Okay. So we made our puppet point. We hit U to reveal them and we relabeled them. All right. Shoulder, elbow, wrist. We're good to go. Next step. Yes, fantastic. Okay, so the next step is I'm just going to go up to window quickly, right? So up here at the top window, I'm going to open up my Doik. And I'm just going to dock that wherever for now. We're literally going to be doing one thing with Doik, and then we, we can close the window again. Okay, so when we open up Doik, uh, I'm going to click on the little Meccano arm that says rigging up here on the top right, and it's going to take me into my links and constraints tab here. All right, so this is for my rigging, remember, excuse me, remember, um, the very first tab, this is where we went to generate our skeletons. All right, the second tab here is where we want to be. This is where we either um, auto rig it or where we actually add some bones. Okay, so making sure that our key, three keyframes for those pins are selected, I'm going to go up to where it says add bones and I'm gonna click on that. All right, nice and simple to remember. It has the exact same icon as the puppet pin tool. So we know that they're one another. Click add bones, do it, will do its thing. And now some things will have changed on your timeline. Okay, cool. So if we take a look at what's changed quickly, obviously visually on screen, we've now got these red thumbtack icons, all right? So these are just more not noticeable uh, bone icons than those little yellow dots, all right? Um, but if we take a look in the timeline, you'll see that we now have got three new layers that have been made. So these are our bone arm wrist, bone arm elbow, and a bone arm shoulder, okay? If I hadn't relabeled these, it would have said B arm, pop pin one, pop pin two, three, etc. which can be very confusing. All right, so I'm gonna grab 
Layers 9, 10, and 11, those are the only blue layers on screen for me right now. I'm going to move them to the top of the layer stack so I can see them clearly. All right. Now, the arm, the AI arm layer, we're pretty much done with, right? We've set it up, we've rigged it, we can lock it and get rid of it. The only thing that I want to show you quickly is these red values over here. All right, hopefully you can see that rather than my values being blue like they normally are, they're all red, uh, like redded out. Okay, so what this means is this information um, is being controlled by something else, right? So the position and rotation of these pop-up pin tools have been parented and linked to their corresponding bone layers. Okay, so if you ever see an asset that you can't move or that you can't adjust, you'll see that regardless of how far I want to click and drag, it always snaps back to the same red number. That means I need to go and affect whatever it's parented to in order to change it. Okay, just to give an idea for what that is. Then I'm going to collapse my arm layer. I'm going to lock it. I click it shy and do the same as my background. So remember, we can do that by clicking on the little mushroom button over here. When the stream eventually catches up, yeah. And then turning the little mushroom dude on at the top right there. Okay, cool. Now, the only real parenting we need to worry about here is just making sure that we get all of our finger bases. That's all the layers that end in one. And I'm going to parent those to layer one. There's my bone arm wrist. That means when we play around with the rotation of layer one, our fingers will move with it. Okay. All good. No one left behind. No one that needs to be caught up. That's why I love such a small class because you dudes are just on point. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just quickly move myself over to where it says second number one. We're going to lay out our initial keyframes here. And what I'm going to be working with you know, from experience, we're not going to be working with the shoulder. So that's layer three. So I'm going to lock and shy that layer. All right, so currently my timeline now reads one, two, and then four down to 11. Okay, now the first thing that I want is the position. Uh, I want to create some position keyframes of a second number one for layers one and two. All I've done is just select those two keyframes, hit P for position, and clicked on my little stopwatches to create some position keyframes there. All right, second number two. And as I said, you'll see in a moment, thankfully, this entire animation is very, very simple to do. Um, second number two, what I'm going to do is grab the position frame for my elbow. That's layer two. And I'm going to drag it down and slightly to the right. Okay. And then I'm going to grab my wrist. It's layer one. And I'll bring it to the right like so. So this is going to give us that sort of like nice gooey, bendy arm um, sort of illusion going on here. So let me see. Oh, the stream is bad today. Um, that's done. Let's see. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, I've made two key, two sets of keyframes. Very first one, exactly where they are at rest. Coming down to a position like so. So that's really just moving the elbow pin down and to the right. And then the wrist pin straight along to the right okay second number three we're going to be doing this for literally everything else for the fingers as well for this exercise we're just going to copy and paste our very first set of keyframes okay so we've got three keyframes and all they're doing is allowing us to have this nice little uh, noodle arm bend going on when i hit space bar okay we're all okay so far. Just little boy, yes, exactly. I love my little boys, dude. Let's just quickly represent and see if this is going to help. No, yes. Oh, the bandwidth here is absolutely horrible. 
Sorry, guys. I'm just trying to get to the point where you can actually see what it is the fuck I'm doing. But we all have three keyframes down. Is that right? We're all good so far. We've all got our arms sitting on second number two looking something like this. Oh, yeah, dude. What are we complaining about? Fucking pinnacle of the world internet right here. Places like India ain't got nothing on our value prices. Okay. So now I'm going to go down to my fingers. Uh, before I go... <laughs> No. Um, what I want to do before I continue is um, I'm going to just quickly select layer one. I'm going to hit shift and R for rotation, and I'll create my very first keyframe for rotation there. Remember, we want to add some rotation to these fingers so that when our fingers are going to close up, they don't look like we're just like, we've got like a broken wrist with our fingers kind of just scrunching together. Okay. So my first rotation for, uh, for uh, layer one reads zero degrees rotation. Layer two, let's bring that in to 50 degrees, five zero. Keyframe three, copy and paste the very first keyframe. Okay. So if I play that back, we now have a slightly more interesting power pose going on. Okay, but now it's time to start laying out the fingers. So let's grab all of our layers, four down to 11. It's R for rotation, and let's create our very first blank keyframes, or the, the zero degree rotation keyframes sitting on top of second number one. Okay. Second number two, what I want here is I kind of just want to do a little bit of a close over, but I want this motion to be quite large so that it is kind of the focus of what we're looking at. Okay. So I'm going to start off with the thumb, that is layer four and layer five. I'm going to bring layer five up. Let's set that rotation to about negative 40. All right, so layer five rotation, the second keyframe reads negative four zero degrees. My thumb tip, I'll make that negative 10. Okay. And I'll repeat all of these rotation values once I've set them in place. If you get lost, that's fine. Uh, index one, that's seven. I want to bring over to four, zero, 40 degrees. Layer six, I'm going to close in that like AOK -okay symbol at five, zero degrees. Okay. Then we need to grab the middle finger. So that's layer eight and nine. So layer nine, always starting off with the base to get our sort of initial movement down. Um, I'm going to move layer 9 to 45, 4, 5 degrees. Layer 8, I'm going to sit to 35, so that's 3, 5 degrees. And then finally, the pinky ring after uh, the tip and base, so that's layer 11. That's going to be 35 degrees, and then our... Rotation for layer 10 is going to be 45. Okay, so taking a look at the rotation values that we've just set. Okay, so layer 1, the rotation for the wrist, that reads positive 5, 0. Moving on down to layer 4. Layer 4's rotation currently reads negative 10. Layer 5 reads negative 4, 0, negative 40. Index 2, that's layer 6, that reads 5, 0, 50 degrees. Index 1, that's layer 7, that reads 40, positive 4, 0. Layer 8, that reads positive 35, positive 3, 5. Layer 9 reads positive 4, 5, positive 45. 10 reads positive 45, and 11 reads positive 35. Okay, so now we've got this sort of like fingers closing over look going on and I can always go back and adjust these for example I'm not happy with where the pinky base is so I'm going to close that over a little bit further okay so layer 11 I've adjusted the rotation to read 65 degrees rotation 65 okay and then on second number three exactly what we've been doing so far nice and lazy just copying pasting all of our very first keyframes Like so. 
just to stretch that hand back out again. And if I play back here, we've got this nice motion of our fingers closing over. Okay. Do we all have three keyframes for each of our layers on screen? The only layer that should have two sets of keyframes is our layer one that is going to have position and rotation. Oh, wait, you did on point. We're going to finish this very quickly today. Okay. So the next thing that I want to do now that I've done this, I have essentially blocked out my animation. I want to select all of my keyframes and just apply some easy ease to them. So it's either hitting F9 or selecting more right clicking and saying keyframe is easy ease. All right. So already now the application of easing is going to start applying some nice uh, aesthetic movement going on. All right. And now it's time for our favorite, the ever watchful, ever present graph editor. All right, so I am going to work with my two position values first. So there's the position value for layer one, position value for layer two. Because they're moving at the same rate at the exact same time, I can do them both. And in our graph editor, it looks like an M, a super M symbol. All right, again, make sure that you, uh, if we right click in the space over here in the graph editor, we want to be working on edit speed graph. <laughs> Derek Basil laughs menacingly in the corner. Oh yeah, dude. Derek, Derek is like the, the gateway drug to difficult or let me not say difficult, like Derek is the is the gateway drug to then hardcore misery and despair. I think is how I would say. <laughs> oh yeah. Cool. So we're all working on the value graph. I am going to click and drag uh, my sort of middle frames over here, and I am going to just start pushing these out. I want them to be too intense, right? Because we need to remember that whenever my arm starts moving, it needs a bit of time to speed up and slow down. And it needs some time to come to rest at the end, so we can do something like that. Okay, so now it's going to start off slow, speed up, ease into that second position, sl start off slow, speed up, and then ease into our final position. Okay. Cool. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dive, just zoom in down here, and exactly as I did with the ball bounce, not too high up, but all I want to do is slightly raise the positioning here off of that horizon line, and this is just a personal little touch so that our arm doesn't come to a complete halt. All right, so we've got that sort of like constant movement going on. Okay. Do we all have a menacing super M symbol on screen at the moment? We're all ready to move on to the rotation keyframe easing away. Okay. Next up, I want the rotation values for everything that has a rotation value. Okay, so I've selected the rotation value for layer one, and then I'm holding down shift. Once this stream actually catches up, you'll see that I have selected all the rotations for layers four down to 11. Wanna work with me? Do you want an update? Okay, start presenting and start presenting again. Sorry, dudes. Just trying to find a way to work around the fact that our country was very ill prepared for a global pandemic. Laughs in uh, fake laughter, hiding real pain. Definitely. Okay, hopefully now this is presenting. Is it showing you anything? No. You guys can't see, there we go, there's the presentation. All right, am I recording? Always forget to check if I'm recording. Yes, okay, cool. So there we go. 
I have now selected all the rotation values and I'm going to dive into my graph editor. All right. Oh, my word. There we go. So graph editor, we kind of have this like um, Don Bluth over exaggerated tired owl is. Um, and what we have going on here, right? These upward arcs are our fingers that are rotating into the positive values. All right. When they back come back down to rest, they are then rotating back down from positive values towards zero. Ergo, moving towards negative values. Okay. These two lines here are the thumb. They rotate in the opposite direction. Ergo, ergo, word of the day. There we go. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to allow them a little bit of time to speed up and slow down. Now, I don't want to do, well, I could do this at the exact same time as my um, graph editor for the position. Right, but I kind of want to allow a little bit of overlapping sort of motion here. So that's why I'm going to affect this slightly differently. I'm not going to let the one drive the other. Kind of want to see how I can go about creating some nice overlapping action as they are by simply messing around with the graph editor for now. Okay, so the fingers, I'm not going to worry about moving those keyframes off of that horizon line. Um, it kind of makes sense, right? They're coming into a terminal position and then move back to rest again. Okay, are we all good? Uh, I don't know if I'm maybe moving too fast, leaving anyone behind. Anyone lost, close to tears? We need to start resorting to cannibalism to stay alive. All good. I'm glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Okay. Cool. Who who can sort of give me a guess if you if you would like to venture one? What would we do next? What would be our next step in refinement here. Angela, what do you think the next step in refinement is? <laughs> yes, you. The fact that you have just protested means that I'm going to ask you. Timing. Yes, Alistair to the rescue, right? So we want to, yes, Jacques as well, we're definitely going to stagger the keyframes out. But what we want to do first is we kind of want to just make sure that this movement isn't occurring too slowly, right? So for each movement to take place over an entire second, that's a little long. Um, you guys will sort of get used to the idea of how long an actual second can be. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump out by about 20 frames. Okay, from my very first set of keyframes. Now, After Effects works with 25 frames a second. Okay, a lot of people ask why. That's because it needs one frame before this little blue indicator on our timeline to be red. Okay, so that means we need that final extra keyframe so that After Effects can read the 24 frames that come before that. It's like a little piece of useless information for you. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly shift up my second column of keyframes so that it is currently sitting 20 frames away from the first set. I'll jump out by another 20 frames here. All right, and then I'm just going to, one, two, let's set that to 22 frames. Kind of always, as always, making it up as I go along, hoping for the best, and then adjusting it later. Okay. Cool. So now that we've brought those together, now we can start staggering them out. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do, the best way that we can go about creating this um, overlapping action is we want to get the fingers and or any, any rotation values, essentially. So the rotation in the wrist, the rotation of the fingers, we want to make sure that those don't happen at the exact same time as the position values changing. Okay. That's really going to sell the overlapping action. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the rotation value for layer one and then all the rotation values for layers four down to 11. Okay. Once I have those rotation frames selected, I'm just going to click and drag them and I'm going to move them down the timeline by about two frames, maybe even three. Maybe we can, I can try and sell the idea of like a nice, there we go. Cool. So I move all the rotation keyframes down by three. All right. The next thing that I want to do here, all right, continuing to stagger out, continuing to refine. Now I'm going to overlay the fingers, all right, so that they don't all occur at the same time. Now the thumb, I'm happy where it's at, right? 
one of these fingers may as well stay timed as they are. So we'll just make designate that the thumb. And then we can click and drag down to select layer six all the way down to layer 11. Okay. And I'm going to push those keyframes by two or three frames to the right. All right. So once you've done that, if you hit spacebar, you'll see that we're starting to get this nice overlapping action going on in those fingers. All right. Moving on. Let's think about now the index finger. I'm happy with that is. So let's think about the, the pinky finger. So if you sort of take a look at your palm, moving each of your fingers, right, you can move index, middle, and ring finger independently, right? The pinky pulls the ring finger wherever it goes. So essentially, the pinky is kind of the driving force for that ring finger. So I am going to stagger that ring finger out beyond the point. One, two, three, our pinky. All right. And then I'll select the keyframes for those 8, 9, 10, and 11. And then I'll push all of those out by three frames. So what I've essentially just done is I've overlapped my pinky with my index finger and my thumb. And then <laughs> I have a very large um, gap between my pinky and my middle finger. So I'm just going to, or my, my ring finger rather. So I'm just going to reduce the number of frames coming in between. Okay. Cool. So that, uh, that ring finger, the way that it's uh, sort of closing at the moment is a good example of how even though anatomically correctly, our pinky drives that middle finger right visually we kind of want it to go rolling from index middle pinky right so we won't, we won't do that let's subvert those expectations but just to give you an idea just because it works mechanically in real life doesn't always mean it's going to work um visually okay cool so we've staggered them bitches out as one of the dudes from yesterday said the last staggering that i now want to do is i just want to make sure that my fingertips are sort of lagging behind the bases by one or two frames as well. Okay. So clicking and dragging, I'm going to select the rotation for thumb two. That's layer four, layer six, layer eight, and layer 10. Those are all of our layers that end in the word two. All right. So thumb two, index two, middle two, pinky two. And I'll move those out by about two frames. Okay, and that then just means that our fingertips are going to overlap with the rest of the motion. Okay, so we've got some fairly like decent motion going on. Now I kind of just want to set my keyframes up in a way that, you know, makes sense in terms of the timing. So we've already retimed all of those co uh, columns, right? Um, earlier on, we went back. We shifted them correctly so that we had 20 frames to work with and then 22 frames to work with. So I'm really happy with the speed of this. All right. Or let me just quickly hide everything so I can show you what I really mean here. Okay. So <clears throat> let's just pay attention to this, to this rotation value here. All right. So I'm happy with how many frames between each of these keyframes. All right. Let's call that the timing ratio. Right, so the ratio between the first frame to the second keyframe, I'm happy with. The ratio between the second keyframe and the third keyframe, I'm happy with. However, if I wanted now to make sure that <clears throat> I want this mo motion to happen faster, but to keep that ratio, does anyone remember what we need, well, like what we can do? We have that little trick in After Effects involving the Alt or the Option button, depending on what machine you're on. Alistair, can you remember? It's fine if you don't. Well, what's the question again? The question is, I showed you guys a very neat little trick last term where if we hold down Option or Alt and interact with our keyframes, we can close them in on each other while still keeping the ratio mathematically the same. We're essentially going to be squashing these keyframes closer together. All right. So let me show you how to do this. We always want to select all the keyframes that we actually want to affect. Typically, we want to do this with all of our keyframes because you can imagine that if we left the, the positioning going at the same rate that it currently is, um, 
it would then kind of break if we like shorten the amount of time that our fingers um, take in order to to close. Right. So if I draw keyframes and I hover over the furthest keyframe from the start of my animation. So currently, that is the final rotation for layer eight, if you've set yours up the same way as mine. Holding down Option or Alt on Windows, and then clicking and dragging this keyframe to the left or the right, you'll see that I can either squash these frames down by dragging them to the left, or make my animation longer by dragging them to the right. Okay, so the Obviously, taking into account that we're bringing them closer together, so we're giving them less frames to work with. However, the ratio of the first 20 frames is still there. Right? So I don't have to go back and retime everything to make sure that they're all still lined up. So if I give this about one second to occur, I'm fairly happy with that. And I'll just move all of those keyframes to the start of my timeline so that we can see the animation from the very start. Okay, if you guys will just excuse me for one second, um, I just need to go and take care of something, um, but I will be right back. So if you want to play around with this, play around with holding down Option or Alt, drag those keyframes like all the way out, see what this motion looks like in slow motion, see what it looks like if it's super fast, get it to how you like it, and that'll be essentially finished. Okay, so I'll be right back. Two minutes, three minutes tops. We all good so far. Is there anyone that's lost? We are way ahead of schedule, so I can definitely catch anyone up if necessary. But you guys are my little babies. You seem to always be on top of it, so I'm quite happy with it. Your arm looks like a villain. I'd be keen to see that. Very, very keen to see that. So this is going to be the first section of homework. All right. Um, you can either, like, obviously, oh, I'm out of breath. I'm so unfit. Literally just walk, like, three meters to the bathroom. Um, yeah. So what I would like you to do with this is preferably start from scratch and practice following along with this video, the, the classroom video, all right? I want to get you into the process of, like, being able to follow the steps correctly without having to... Um, 
constantly go back and check on notes. Like obviously the more confident you become with this process, the less daunting and stressful this entire process. <laughs> you know, yeah, a uh, hundred pushups, hundred squats, make sure to save money by not using your air conditioner or your heater and uh, shave your head secret to, to ultimate superpowers. Although I'm not shaving my head again. Last time I did that, people thought I looked like a Taliban agent with a beard. Okay. Um, but honestly, if you want to be lazy, you can just refine this particular piece of animation, render it out and submit it. Okay. Remember, when we are sort of like retiming our things, so this used to be two, uh, three seconds long. It is now one second long. So I just want to go to maybe half a second after the animation ends, and I'm just going to hit N for NATO. And that is going to end my workspace. It's going to end my timeline there. So again, stream. There we go. Okay. So when I render this now, I'm going to have this like short video as opposed to boom. Um, yeah, dude, Angela, I'm exactly the same. And then I have to move a lot more to go back to the shops and get more snacks because I have no self-control and eat all of them in the same day. Um, Okay, so this way we render out and we get like a nice short video. Cool. Then moving on to the next thing, let's look at our little cool cucumber dude. Uh, stop presenting, represent. Animation is friend, animation is life. Animation will become your life and you will slowly sink into the oblivion as you make cool things move. Okay. The stream wants to actually work. Let's see if it's actually going to show anything. Can you guys see a presentation or is it just the thumbnail of my face? right now it's not updating for me the longest animation that i've ever worked on you can see the cucumber man fantastic okay um yo the longest animation in terms of like length was a three four minute in-house animation explainer for absa um but that was me working with three other people. So we broke down all the shots, we split them up and then we stitched them back together. So I probably spent about 72 hours on the project. No, a lot more because this is an absolute shithead of a client. Please don't sue me, Absa. You already have all the money I have. So, but yeah, so that's kind of like the length of it. Um, if I think back to when I was studying, definitely the longest animation I worked on was my third year project, which went on for about a minute, two minutes long, um, with straight animation between everything and then like a, a voiceover on top of it. So that's probably the, the longest one I had. That one I think had about 2,000, 3,000 layers, um, like set up amongst different compositions. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is um, I'm gonna close my Duic window Right, my Duik panel. Uh, we're not going to need it. I've already pre-rigged this entire character for you. Um, so all I'm going to do is I am going to click on the little uh, three lines next to the name um, Duik Battle 2, and I'm just going to say close panel. Uh, super onions. You're going to have to explain that one. My head is just, I don't know. I'm getting old. I'm not down with the youth anymore. You guys say things, and then I look at them, and I'm like, I don't know what this means. And because of that, I now am irrationally angry. Ergo, I am an old man. Yes, layers, <laughs> layers, layers, and layers. There we go. I get you. Okay. So the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag uh, my timeline. So remember, if I hover over the sort of top section of my timeline, you'll see my mouse gets two little white rectangles at the bottom. All right. So if I click and drag that, I can then dock this wherever I like. And I'm just going to dock it somewhere here to the left so that I can see my timeline vertically. Okay. And I'm going to shift this out so that I have a lot more space to work with visually. This is where having a dual screen setup is really great because you can actually 
move i see the stream is now not catching up again uh but you can actually set up your timeline to be on one screen entirely and it's just your feel such such power unlimited power okay so i've set my workspace up like this reason being and you guys can can just take a look at it um here's our layers right in our timeline these are the only layers that we're going to be working with okay there are oh, like 10 of them 15 of them okay if we click on our little shy dude at the top of our timeline you'll see that i've hidden many many layers this one comes down to 42 layers including the background okay now the cool thing about this is all the layers that i've hidden are layers that we don't need to use all right so if i take a look at this i've got all my illustrator assets right so that's layers 16 down to 21. i've set those up i've parented the um my thumb bases my indexes everything to the correct thing uh, and then I generated bones for those, did the exact same thing for the other arm and the two legs. All right. So now if I shy and hide everything away again, we can take a look at how this character has been set up. Okay. So to make your lives a lot easier, uh, I'm just busy updating the one from last year or two years ago. Um, but I've got a screenshot of all of the layers. What am I doing? Give me back my Photoshop. I've got a screenshot of all of the layers here. All right, so I've got one where all the layers are shown and I've got one where only the layers that we'll be using are shown, okay? And then what I'm going to do is essentially, if I dive into my PDF viewer, I'm going to be giving you a layer directory that is going to show you exactly what is parented to what. So I've shown you here the bones for the head. I've shown you how they are parented to each other. And then I've also given you a line that indicates what assets are parented to those bones. Okay, so it's going to be a nice long um, sort of breakdown. It's not something that you need to look at. It's just there if you want to take a look at how the rig was done. Okay, but for the rest of the term, I will be providing you with working rigs. So you don't need to worry too much about that. Let's go back to After Effects. Okay, so let's take a look at what these layers do. Are we all good. Are we all looking at our cucumber dude. I believe so. I, I have faith that you would speak out and tell me. Okay. I'm going to move uh, to second number one on my timeline, just so that I can sort of start making sense. Um, but let me take a look at layer one down to layer 23. All right. So layer one, I have labeled as our God null. All right. So wherever this null goes, our body will follow. All right. And if I adjust its rotation, um, our body will rotate around that point. Okay, cool. So essentially this god now is going to be acting in the position of the hips. It's gonna be the driving force of our character moving up and down as well as leaning forwards and backwards to help sell and exaggerate that idea further. Okay, taking a look at our arms, I'll show you the, uh, the front arm only just so that we can take a look at that. So let me solo those and then give you that there okay so it works the exact same way as it does with the orange layers so i tend to refer to these as like red arm and orange arm but the shoulder here if i hit rotation currently mine is set to 90 degrees but that will move my entire arm back and forth all right what i want you to do is for layers two and five please set the rotation values to nine road degrees 90 degrees so that our arms are chilling at our waists, like by our sides. Okay, layer three, that's our elbow. So if I adjust the rotation for that, you'll see that it drives the hand as well. Oh. Speaking continuously, looking at stream, nothing's happening, so much fun. Okay, so playing around with the rotation, this is going to allow me to bend my arm back and forth. Um, and we would leave it like so. We do have a controller for the wrist, but thankfully, we're not going to be needing that controller anytime soon. So we're going to leave that out and just keep it shy. Okay. Taking a look at the leg. Typically, I refer to these as peach and pink leg. Um, otherwise, I'll call them out by the layer. Obviously, our hips. So that is layer 9 and, or sorry, layer 8 and layer 12. Using a rotate our legs 
all the way out. Yo, I'm getting so sick of this stream. Let's see if I can get it to work again. Okay, cool. So layers eight and nine, if you play around with the rotation, that's going to move our legs back and forth. Okay. Then let us take a look at layer nine and 13. These are the knees. And the rotation is going to do the same thing as the elbow. All right. So that's going to allow us to bend our joints without having to constantly go back and um, like puppet them essentially. Okay. Then the ankles, this one's quite important. The ankle and the foot roll, these are, are very, or the foot fold rather, these are very important when it comes to making sure that everything stays in the correct place. Okay, so if I were to, for example, just set up my knee, so let's bend it out like that. Sometimes, depending on how we rotate or move things, our foot, which if I sort of move the rotation from the ankle, the stub of the foot can sort of like fall out. All right, so this rotation key for both of the feet allows me to make sure that that doesn't happen. Okay, and then the foot fold, the rotation for that is going to allow me to bend my toes so that I can always keep my touch to the ground correctly. All right, there's one thing, one thing that will break any animation, character animation, and that is an animation that does not make sure that its feet interact with the floor correctly. Okay, I'll try and find the advert. I don't know if you guys are big like watching YouTube. Um, but like a little while ago, there were those little animated videos of like these pre-generated characters. And it was like an online shopping thing. I don't know if you guys remember that. They were talking like it was a really nasally presentation voice. It was horrible. Um, the biggest fuck up for that entire animation was that when the characters were moving across screen, they were moving across the screen slower than their feet were moving. So they were like sliding right and that is what is going to break any animation okay so <clears throat> lastly layer 23 that is my torso all right so slide to the left exactly um <clears throat> my torso is going to allow me to sort of bend my character forward all right obviously if we push it too far we're going to break that and i can then have him leaning backwards as well okay so we're going to be using layer 23 and layer one in tandem to help me sell the idea of a proper bend in the torso. Okay, again, waiting for that to catch up. Let's take a look here. All right, are we ready to begin animating? <clears throat> We're gonna keep it nice and simple with this dude. We're going to do our locking and we'll definitely have enough time to um, then apply some easing just to give you an idea. Um, but before we begin, would you guys like just a quick two or three minutes just to stretch your legs, go to the bathroom, anything like that. I often forget that like with these online things, people still actually have bodily functions. If you're good to carry on, just hit like a Y in chat. If you want to take a quick break, hit an N in chat. Okay. Why, why, why? I'm assuming that everyone else then is good to continue, so we shall we shall do so. Now, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the key um, layers that are currently in my timeline. I'm going to hit R for rotation. Holding down shift, I'm going to hit P for position. And I'm going to create a keyframe for each of these layers on the position and rotation values. All right, now, why have I done this? First of all, the process that we're using here still counts as forward kinematics. All right, can anyone tell me why this process, even though we're using Bones and Dirk, why would this be considered forward kinematics still? You wanna take a guess? Right. Can anyone tell me the difference between IK and FK? Inverse kinematics and forward kinematics. 
It's okay. I get confused between the two all the time. <clears throat> but remember that one works with rotation. One works with a dedicated controller that controls rotation and position for me. Okay. So this process is still going to be forward kinematics because we are working with rotation to essentially drive most of the effects that we're going to see. All right. Um, the biggest thing about using this method with the bones is that it is typically going to have a lot more layers. All right. And that's because I'm going to be generating bones that then need to be animated in terms of rotation. So if I was using an inverse kinematic um, setup, I would probably have fewer layers on screen to work with, but I would also have slightly less sort of control over how everything's going to work. So it really does come down to what method is best for the animation involved. Our character here, his legs, his torso, his, his arms, they're all one layer. So by adding those bones, Obviously, like this is necessary to apply the puppet bones to these assets, but if I had multiple broken up assets, then inverse kinematics would be the best bet. Okay, so it's kind of just like identifying what we need to do. What I'm going to do now is once I've created all of those keyframes, I'm going to select them, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to say toggle hold keyframe. All right, so I'm going to right click on one of those keyframes, toggle hold. We remember this from last term. This is how we're going to go about blocking out our animation. Okay. So, very important, right now, save your file. Don't overwrite, just save it as a duplicate file, like underscore one or underscore class or something like that. Um, and the reason we want to do this now is because our character is... Oh man. Our character is locked into place. All right. This means that I can, if I go ahead and something breaks or my file just becomes corrupted or anything like that, I can always jump back to this point where everything is set up. I've done all the rigging and I can then restart if necessary. I don't have to go back and re-rig everything. Right. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Now we're going to be doing some very simple uh, movement for this dude. All I'm going to have him do just to give us like a nice... Uh, I don't want to spend hours on this. You guys don't want to spend hours on this. And obviously your reference footage is going to be different anyway. So this is just an introduction to the process. Okay. So moving over to second number two, let's get our character into a somewhat interesting position. So what you guys can do for me is we are going to create some guides for our character. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to hit Control or Command R, Romeo, to bring up my rulers. And I'm going to zoom in over here by the feet, and I'm going to create some horizontal rulers for where my feet touch the ground. All right? This guarantees that I always have reference. I'm never going to find myself in a position where my animation looks like shit because my feet don't apply or abide, rather, by the laws of physics. All right. Then I'm going to create a vertical line. I'm going to put that in front of him. And this is just going to give us like a visual idea of what he's interacting with. All right. Obviously, we'll generate some assets for you guys to interact with. But for now, let's keep it simple. Okay. To make sure that we don't mess around with our guides, remember, if we go up to view, we can always either clear them if we wanted to start fresh, or we can check and say lock guides if we're happy with where they are. All right, that's going to mean I can't accidentally mess with them. I can always unlock them and move them around if necessary, however. Okay, cool. So I'm going to have this guy set up so that he's kind of getting into the position of pushing this uh, invisible wall. Um, so this process is exactly the same as we've been doing, except there is a lot more going back and forth between adjusting these keyframes, which is why blocking is so important because I'm not going to be able to get everything into the correct position straight away. Obviously, if I bend my torso, that's going to affect where my shoulders start. If I bring my god nail down and I need to bend my knees, that's going to affect where my feet are. All right, so we're going to sort of do some initial posing, go back and change something, go back and update accordingly. Okay, so it's a nice sort of cathartic process of back and forth and by blocking this out, it's going to make our lives a lot easier. Okay. So first off here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my God Null. And I'm going to move it down 
by a few let's holding down shift and just hitting my arrow key up and down so one two three four let's take him sort of holding down shift four arrow clicks down and you'll see that it's updated my position keyframe for me already a toggle hold fantastic then i'm going to apply a little bit of rotation okay so my rotation value for layer one reads positive five degrees. Okay. All good so far. Hopefully. Then diving down to my torso, that's my bottom layer, layer 23. I'm going to affect its rotation. I have my character bending forward slightly. So layer 23, my rotation currently reads 20, positive 20 degrees rotation. All right. So the reason why we're now doing rotation between both of the godnel and the, um, the torso, one is rotating, or they're each opposite, uh, rotating in opposite directions of each other. So if I were to push my torso too far, we see how... Um, just undo that quickly. If I push my torso too far, you see how we start to clip, right? We really like squash the chest into itself. It's also not going to allow me to really like push my hips out backwards. All right. So that's where the rotation in our Godinal helps us to sort of counteract the cons of each and use the pros of each. Okay. Hopefully making sense. Cool. Next up, let me place my legs because those are where we need our bent knees and then we'll be able to do our arms after that. Okay, so first thing that I'm going to do is I kind of want my character to slide his leg back. So his peach leg, that is layers 8, 9, 10, and 11. Those are going to slide backwards. And then my pink leg, I'm going to sort of have like a Captain Morgan bend in the front. Okay, so... Grabbing layer eight, I'm going to shift it ever so slightly to the left, All right? Updating its position. And this is going to sell the idea of our hip sort of rolling to one side as we either open up the hips or close up the hips and then obviously pose our legs. Okay, my pink hip, I'm not gonna do anything here apart from moving it up slightly, All right? So obviously if I move it too far to the right, it's gonna clip out of my body. All right, and if I move it too far to the left, it's kind of going to look as though our man has a very large penis with a shoe on the end of it. And then is kind of like clearly an amputee. And you can't see it because the stream isn't working. Let's see if we can get it back up again. You guys see the cucumber? All I can see is a thumbnail at the moment. There we go. Fantastic. Cool. So we kind of see how like the position of the legs is is very important depending on like the kind of idea we're trying to sell. Okay, so I'm just going to shift it back into the correct position. Then we're going to move and rotate our knees. Okay. So let me start with my pink leg because this is really going to be like the the guide for this. So I'm going to grab my knee, that's layer 13. I'm going to push my knee to the right and I'm going to bring it up. All right. And I'm kind of just going to use those lines that I created earlier. All right. And I'm going to make sure that my heel is on top of that line. Remember that we have the foot fold that allows us to adjust the position of the toes. So rather than messing around with the rotation of both the ankle and the foot fold, we can kind of use the knee to help us get that right. Okay. I'm also going to adjust the rotation. So here is where we can actually rotate the shoe. So I'm going to adjust the rotation to 20 degrees, to zero. Okay. Am I moving too quickly? Are you guys kind of following along? Hopefully we're good. Okay. Cool. So as we can see in the stream, we've got our sort of foot stub kind of clipping out of the shoe here at the moment. This is where I'm going to grab my R ankle. All right. So that's going to be layer 14. And I'm going to adjust the rotation to make sure that my foot stays inside of the shoe. 
Okay. There we go. So that's updated. So the rotation for my ankle, that's layer uh, 14. That currently reads 20 degrees, positive 20 degrees. Okay. Good so far. Hopefully. Next up, we're going to roll our foot. So the foot fold, that's layer 15. I'm going to roll that into the negative direction in a rotation. So that's going to be negative 40 degrees. And then I can actually lift my knee even higher just to make sure again that my foot, my toes are connecting. As long as the toes or the heel are touching our horizon line for the floor, the illusion of the movement will look correct. All right. Um, so, guys, I'm going to have to ask for some patience here. I'm getting so frustrated with how useless this presentation is. All this because some fucking dumbass wanted to eat a bat. Okay. Hopefully we can see our cucumber. Hopefully we can see that I have adjusted the roll of my toes. And that's going to allow me to make sure that my tippy toes. Can you guys see? Has it updated so that my, my toes have rotated forward so we can see that my toes are touching the floor line? Yes. Cool. So it doesn't matter if the ball of my foot sinks below that floor line right? It's going to look a lot more natural in this position than if I kept it into the correct, like if I did this and then only the ball of the foot was touching the ground. That's going to look as though I'm levitating. Okay. So we'll bring it back to where our toes touch that line. Cool. Now we can pose the other leg. All right. So I'm going to adjust the rotation for my hip. That's layer eight. Let's roll that out to about two zero degrees rotation so positive 20 moving down to layer 9 I'm going to adjust that rotation there all right so that rotation is now currently reading at 45 degrees and I'm going to shift my knee up slightly and to the right uh, not that far to the right perhaps something like that just making sure that our feet or our foot rather is still touching the ground. Okay. Cool. Grabbing layer 10, I'm going to adjust that rotation just so that our shoe looks a little bit more comfortable. So that's going to be about five degrees. Right. And then layer 11, our foot fold, I'm going to set my toes to... That's layer 11. I'm going to set my toes to about negative 40 degrees. Negative four zero. Let me push a little bit further. Let's set that to negative five zero. All right. And here is where I can then grab either my ankle and adjust its uh, sort of position here to try and keep the length of my leg the same, or I could move that back and forth. But I kind of want to just move the ankle for now. Okay. We all good. As our guy leant forward and he has adjusted his feet, so he's bent his legs. He's getting ready to, to dive into this action that he's about to take. It would appear so. Fantastic. Okay. Now we can do the arm. All right. So I'm going to grab my red arm here. That's layer two. It's my shoulder. And I'm going to wrist, bring its rotation up to negative seven degrees minus seven degrees all right red elbow we're going to make the rotation on that negative three zero negative 30 degrees okay now we need to do the back arm and i'm going to sort of pose this in a slightly different way um, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring the rotation for layer five I'm going to bring that out to about negative four zero degrees, or let's make it negative three zero degrees. And I'm going to change its position so that it's slightly further to the left, and I'm going to use it up so that we can kind of see that shoulder 
if I were to quickly hide my arm layer here, just to give you an idea, where is this asset here? Okay, so I've shifted the position of my back arm up so that that shoulder um, is kind of rising towards what would be our character's chin, essentially. Okay, turn that shit back on. Hide everything here. All right, layer six, that is my orange elbow. I'm going to rotate down to about 40 degrees, four zero degrees. And then I can update the rotation of my shoulder. Let's bring that up to negative five, five degrees. So the rotation for layer five, I've just updated to read negative five, five. All right, so this is going to help you sell the idea of kind of maybe pushing from below and above. But because our arms aren't overlapping, it's not going to look as though he's only using one arm. Okay. I also want to adjust the position of layer two. So I'm going to bring that shoulder forward. It's just in a straight line like so, maybe something like that. Um, if you've ever pushed your siblings down the stairs, you'll be familiar with the concept that when we move our arms forward, they roll across our chest, right? They bring our, our pectoral muscles closer together. We squeeze our boobs together. And by moving it forward, we are allowing to create that illusion. Okay. Cool. So this is my pose. Like I've now got my, what we would call a hero pose or a dynamic pose going on here. Okay. The last thing that I could do is just change the position of my god now. I'll update that so that at least my character's hand, the one hand, both hands are actually touching that wall. Okay, so essentially what we've done here, if I were to quickly apply easing to this, don't do that yet, but just to give you an idea whether or not the stream is actually going to update. But right now, my character is leaning down into that position. All right, obviously we would need to adjust some easing and some timing. But for now, we've got a pretty decent little motion going on. Okay, cool. Are we, are we feeling somewhat like excited at the fact that we are injecting life into an otherwise dead and non-existent little, little cucumber man? I'm so glad to hear it. Always worry in first term because literally ball bounce is like the most boring shit you can do. Okay, moving over to second number three, we're going to bring this dude back to rest just to sort of keep this animation as simple as possible. Um, and here's where I kind of want to point out a few things. All right, so if we take a look at, I think the first one we can see is layer three. All right, so that's our red elbow. Notice how I made a position keyframe for it, but I haven't adjusted its keyframe position, right? Because it didn't automatically make one for me over second cool, uh, second number two. So that means I can get rid of that frame, right? So I can get rid of the position frame for layer three and layer six. Those are our elbows. And I'll just hold down shift P to collapse that unnecessary property. Moving down to layer 11, we also do not have a position frame. So I can get rid of our P there. And then our leg hip, that's layer 12, we do not have a rotation frame going on, so we can get rid of that. Our knee is fine. Layer 14, we do not have position, so we can get rid of that. Layer 15, we do not have position, we can get rid of that. And layer 23, do not have position, get rid of that. Okay. <clears throat> so I made keyframes for both position and rotation so that I could literally just, when I'm blocking out, place them exactly where I think they need to be. All right, um, now I can go back and I can remove those properties because I know that I don't need them for the current change. If I do need to go back and adjust the position, I can always do that by simply re, like re-adding those frames. Um, we might need to do that now just for this next in-between step I'm gonna show you. But position, clean up my layers, position, clean up my layers, etc. Okay, keep life nice and simple. Layer three or second number three rather, sorry. We're going to do exactly what we did with our arm. We're just going to copy and paste the very first set of resting information. And that's going to allow our character to come fully back in the pose that he began. 
Okay. All good so far. Okay. All good. Fantastic. Glad to hear it. Okay. So if I go back to second number one and I hit space bar with my toggle hold, we're going to have this nice block out motion of our character starting off at rest, coming down into like a pushing pose. Game. Team presentation. Let us see. Okay. I think at some point we're going to have to do like a Discord dry run and see if that streaming works a little bit better. Okay. So my second set of keyframes, my character is in his dynamic pose. Now, typically, this is what we would call a hero pose or a, like I said, a dynamic pose. So this is going to be the most extreme pose that our character takes. All right. We're going to block out all the extreme poses and then we go back and we add some in-betweens okay so taking a look at where our character is if i apply easing to this i'll be able to see that my character is quite smoothly sliding into place however kind of make this a little bit more interesting so again just by applying easing to everything making sure that i know exactly what it is that i want to achieve apply some easing there you say what I want my character to do is I am going to want him to step that pink leg forward. All right. I don't want him to just slide it forward um, currently how he is. I want to add like a step to that. Okay. So I can either do this by leaving my easing on. All right. It's a very nice, simple movement. However, just to practice what I preach, let us quickly apply toggle hold again. And I am now going to mess around with my pink knee. Okay. So let's take a look at the knee and the hip. And um, this is where I need to apply a rotation keyframe to my pink hip. That's layer 12. So I got rid of it. I can simply reapply it and toggle hold keyframe. All right. Cool. So layer 12, I'm going to apply some rotation here. We'll make that negative 25. Okay. My knee, let's make that rotation about positive 25. Okay. It's layer 13, rotation currently reads positive 25. Layer 14, that's our ankle. Let's get like a bit of a slide going on here as though our foot was following along. So that's going to read positive 20 degrees and my foot fold, I'll just have it lagging behind a little bit. So we'll make that 15 degrees. Okay. So for my hip, it just created a rotation keyframe that reads negative 25. So that's layer 12, rotation reads negative 25. Layer 13, rotation reads positive 25. Layer 14 reads positive 20. Layer 15 reads positive 15, and layer 23 we're not going to work with. Okay, going back to the knee, so that's layer 13. I am now going to change its position to both go up and out. Okay, you can see that my hand is actually kind of clipping, so we can just adjust the position of the, the asset frames there. But for now, that's looking fairly decent. All right, and I can even adjust a little bit more uh, rotation to the knee, maybe. So let's adjust that to go up to 45 degrees. All right. Let's take a look. What happens now when I apply easing to everything? Come on, machine, you can do it. Nine. So if I take a look, go back. <laughs> Definitely would have helped if I had keyed the starting position for the rotation of my hip. So the second one, my layer 12 rotation reads zero degrees. It then moves into uh, negative 25. And as we can see, that step isn't going high enough. Okay, so I'm going to rotate my hip even further. Let's make that negative 50. 
All right, and then that foot comes back down to zero degrees rotation where it is touching the ground. Okay, so now we've kind of got this illusion of him lifting his leg and stepping into that position there. Okay, we can see that my, my beige leg is clipping through the floor here. All right, so all I would really need to do is let me shift my, my knee forward and up over here. And then it will slide back into position. So he's going to bend his knee and come back into it. Okay. All good so far. No questions at the moment. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's pretty much the process, right? A lot of people get overwhelmed at this stage. My advice to you is always just break it down into its individual pieces. Go from the easiest point, uh, which is your initial blocking, to the hardest point, which is your refinement. Okay, cool. Let's discuss our homework for next week then, because of course there's homework. Uh, first of all, here is the link to the Discord that Alistair was kind enough to provide for us. If I jump into the Discord quickly, this is the, uh, where, where are you here? This is our setup here. All right, so do you, oh my God. I'm gonna lose it. I'm gonna fucking lose it. Uh, I can show you exactly how we can go about doing that. Uh, in a moment. Okay, so just give you uh, give you guys an idea. Ask a friend. Recommend asking each other uh, any sort of like arbitrary questions here before um, getting like in touch with me. Ask Jason. That's kind of like any questions you guys might have with regards to class. Uh, general chats. You guys are literally free to to chat here. I don't get any notifications. Go wild. Have some social interaction, and then contact session requests, which you guys can then drop. A, um, a request in there rather than an email if you prefer. Okay, so let us quickly take a look at what happens when we break the link to our files. Now, when our files are missing, chances are very good. If I quickly go to, let's go to where these documents are. Okay, so our links will break if we move our working file or our assets file from anywhere other than where they currently are. Okay, so where was it? Are we in week four? Yes. So I sent you guys on Classroom this zip file, right? When you extract it, it opens up this folder here. This is where we would find the bone arm. It's an instruction here, which tells you that when you open the bone rigging folder, double click on this file, open it. You will not get any missing footage errors. Okay. However, let me break this deliberately so I can show you what would happen. Uh, if I were to move this. So if I were to move my cool cucumber layers to a different folder, when I go into After Effects and hit Spacebar, huh, okay, it's probably because it's in the same folder. So let's move it completely to like my desktop for now. Move it to desktop, hit Spacebar and After Effects, and it should give me some missing error. Why doesn't you want to give me missing error footages? Try and break something and it doesn't want to break. And like, I don't know how I feel about that. No, I'm gonna undo that then. All right. Um, when it comes to like breaking files, if we just if we go through the process here. So, if I've got a missing footage file, all of my Illustrator files are gonna have that like horrible little rainbow icon next to it. So I can right click on any one of those layers. I'll go to Reveal. All right, and I can go to reveal source. That's the second option, reveal layer source in project. That's going to open up where these layers are. All right, so this is our directory. Now, if these were missing, I could right click on this and I could go to replace footage. All right, right click, replace footage, select file. And then I would navigate to where those layers have currently been placed. Okay, so if I put them here, wherever, let's just say it's the screenshot. I would leave it exactly as it is. I would then say open. And once that is relinked, it would then find all the other layers and say, cool, 40 other layers have been discovered. Boom, there we go. Okay, there is a tutorial on how to relink missing footage on that YouTube channel that I've given you guys. Um, but yeah, that is that is there for you should we need it. 
Okay, so homework. Bum, bum, bum. First off, we've got the emotions draw, which you guys have all done, which is fantastic. So tomorrow morning after today's classes, I'm going to release the emotions that you guys will be doing. And what I want you to do then, taking a look here, I want you to record your lip sync footage. All right, make sure to capture your face from the front and in order to uh, make sure that you really emote. All right, I don't want you guys sort of acting, right? We remember from the, the reference footage for the weight, acting doesn't get us the aesthetic motion that we're looking for. All right, so what I want is exaggerate what it is that you're going to be reading. Now, when it comes to the quotes, um, they've been very cool. I'm very, very happy with them. But a lot of them are like very deep deep and very um, sort of like, you know, obviously what we would assume a quote to be, something worth remembering. Um, but it doesn't have to be. So if you want to change, if you want to find something slightly more interesting or slightly funnier or anything like that, feel free. After you get your emotion, however, you are locked in. Okay, so make sure that you're happy with it. Next up, using the character file that I've literally just walked you guys through. I want you, uh, also, sorry, there's a lot of typos in here. Um, I want you guys to block out this character using your force and weight reference. Okay, so you're going to import your video file uh, into After Effects. So if I dive back in here, we would import our video file in here. We would put it at the very bottom of the layer stack, maybe hiding the background. And then I can literally just paint by numbers. So I'll find my, my first extreme pose, go there, and then place my character in the same way. Next one, place it. Apply some easing and then start adding like the little in-betweens. Okay, so that's what you're going to do. All you have to do is blocking. Don't worry about applying easing. Don't worry about um, updating that. Just the blocking for next week. What I want from that is you're going to then render that out. You're going to provide me a another copy of the weight reference that you guys uh, will be using. All right, so just give me a little segment that you'll be using. And then you're going to render out the blocked animation and provide me with that render file so I can compare the two. All right. Third thing that I want for next week is you, I want you to practice your rigging. So that's the arm that we did at the beginning of the lesson. All right. I'd like you guys to practice creating the bone rig and then to begin animating. And you'll render that and submit that for next week. Okay, you'll see I've asked you to please submit the following, a render of your reference footage, a render of your blocked animation, a render of your arm animation, and then I forgot to mention here, but also obviously your lip sync footage. Okay, so I'll add a private comment to everywhere here, just saying add. Uh, please also submit your lip sync footage. Okay, cool. Then finally, I've attached uh, some examples here at the bottom. These are uh, Nicola Albert. She finished honors a few years ago. Uh, one of the stronger animation students that we've ever produced. And then Dennis, who by the time he left in third year was sort of like top industry standard. It was ridiculously good at the subject. Um, he's actually started a freelance company at this point. All right, what I want you to do is just pay attention with these videos. Obviously, the force and weight is different, but pay attention to the lip sync. We're going to be using the same, otherwise a very similar uh, face rig, just to give you an idea of what it is that they, um, that what they did, like how their intonation of it was, um, and the exaggeration of the face features, etc. Okay, so that's there for you. And that's all. That's all the announcements that I have, I believe. So if you don't have any questions, then um, you're welcome to bounce. Sorry again for the useless presentation. One tries one's best. All right. Cool. Any questions? Anyone who gets lost? Alistair, fantastic. Uh, I'll check you in the next session next week. Cool. Cheers, Jacques. Angela, thanks very much. Have a great day further. Ivana, ciao, dude. Stay well. Dope.